Good evening, everyone from Hangzhou, China. Today, I'm going to be doing a 100,000 subscriber special Q&A video. I got a bit more questions than I was expecting, so I'm really sorry if I didn't get around your question. I did want to answer them all, but then this video would have been like 40 minutes long. So let's start with number one. Is there any food in China that you thought you would never try, but you ended up actually liking it? That would be duck neck. I was put off from trying duck neck for literally years because the appearance of it is so like gnarly looking, but I don't know, this one day, I just felt like the, the scent wafting from the duck neck was appetizing in some way. Like I just felt drawn to it and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this thing. And I gave it a try and it was like, wow, this is like life-changing stuff here, people. This is so good. Ever since then, I've been a huge fan of spicy duck necks. I also got this at the train station, some spicy duck necks. How don't see. The coldness, the spiciness, and like that kind of hard texture of the meat is 10 out of 10, chef's kiss. I'm a huge fan. And while we're talking about food, let me throw in one more food question. What is your most weird experience with Chinese food? I would honestly say it was that egg alcohol in the previous video. That alcohol was off the rails, man. That was something else. But by some definitions, that would be a beverage. I feel like it's kind of on the fence between a beverage and a soup. So I would say the weirdest food I've tried is pig brain. I tried it in Chengdu. It was one of those things where I would never have ordered that on my own, but people kept telling me how good it is. So finally, I was just like, okay, fine, like we can try it. And I was like, okay, checked it off the bucket list. I've tried the brain. Um, it's not really my thing. It's very soft, so I guess if you didn't know it was a brain, you would maybe think it was tofu if you were like blindfolded or something. Uh, I mean, it wasn't terrible. Just the fact that it's a brain kind of gets you though. It's definitely a psychological thing. It's like, mm, that's a brain, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've basically tried every organ in the book at this point and I'm just, I'm just not a fan. I just don't appreciate the texture, but I've tried them all because there's always someone who's just like, well, if you gotta try this organ. This is gonna be the one. This is gonna be the organ experience that will just revolutionize everything. But I do appreciate the concept of eating organs, not wasting any part of the animal. That's fabulous. I will make my contribution by not wasting the duck necks. So bring me all your duck necks, but the rest the uh, organs, someone else can take those. And now let's do a 180 to a completely different topic. Does the tense relationships between countries, referring to China and the US, have any impact on your travel and daily life? It does impact my life, but I would say overall more in a positive way because people often give a lot of really funny reactions. People love talking about guns, talking about Trump, whatever thing they saw on the news. And it makes for some good content and videos. Like I'm sure at this point you guys have seen my encounter with someone or another. Even in this tiny border town deep in the Pamir Mountains, there is no escape from politics. Not all interactions are bad though, obviously. Like I've been teaching this environmental class to kids as part of my job. And on the very first day of class, one of the kids came up to me and started showing me all these pictures of American military jets he had in his smartwatch and was like asking me which American tank is the best. Like wrong person, kid, you're asking the wrong person. But it was very wholesome, I guess. How will you balance your YouTube channel and your career that you went to grad school for? So if you're not aware, I went to grad school for environmental engineering at Nanjing University and then I did a gap year of traveling and making videos and now I'm working full-time at an environmental organization and to them my YouTube channel slash all the channels I have on Chinese social media are an asset as opposed to something that's taking up my valuable time that I should spend slaving away in the office or whatever. So they've been encouraging me to keep going with making videos because it's a place where I can share a lot of their projects in the future and we can get interesting collaborations with partner organizations. And sometimes I can sort of mix making videos in with my work, which you could see in the previous video, we were filming a mini documentary and I made my own vlog in between the time I spent on work. So that was really cool. Now that zero COVID is finally properly over, we can have so many more exciting projects. So can't wait to share with you guys. Speaking of making videos, 
Have you taken courses in media or in video editing? I've never taken any classes on editing. It's one of those things, as with many things actually, if you just keep doing it for years, you'll just get better at it. You can go to the very, very start of my YouTube channel and watch up until now and you can actually see that progression taking place. Here's the very first video I ever posted on YouTube and it got a total of zero views in 24 hours. So sad. I've seen these markets only about a billion times and yet every time I find one, I'm equally excited. I freaking love markets. <laughs> Dang it, gotta work on my Mandarin. Help me out, Wei. Haha, <laughs> Wei didn't get it either. This comforts me. I really want to interact with people, but I don't know what to say, so I just go to their carts and ask them what stuff is. It's actually some kind of tofu product, but it does look kind of like a cat ear. Oh my goodness, look at these sheep. They're so shaggy. Look at this guy, he's so slow. Look at these cows crossing the road. Oh my god, you wave that off. <laughs> Okay, that's cool. I'm adaptable. Just go with it. Maybe it'll be good. Wow. This is very nice. Do you like it? Do you like it? I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I I really love exploring abandoned places because it's like stepping back in time. This place hasn't been touched or renovated since whenever. I don't really know when. We tried to figure out the year from the newspaper scraps on the ceiling, but couldn't quite get it. About to make some popcorn. The old-fashioned way. We found some horses on the side of the road, so we stopped to see the horses. Oh yeah, I'm freaking excited for those horses. So say hi, then we'll be on our way. So the funny thing about this trip was that Wei really wanted to see the grasslands. That's literally why he came, but there was no grass because it's May. Ha 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 ha. Oh, poor way. We'll have to come back another time. Goodbye. And I have some videos that are even older than that, which are not on YouTube. They're only on Chinese social media. Same editing software since day one. It's called Jianying in Chinese, and I believe it's called CapCut in English. Very simple, user-friendly software, but once you get better at it, you'll find a bunch of really cool features so you can just slowly crawl up the editing ladder without having to use those super fancy, confusing computer softwares. I edit either on my phone or nowadays mostly on a tablet. That's how it be. Okay. This is a question that I got asked by a lot of people. This was probably the most popular question. Do you see yourself living in China forever? I'm not planning on leaving anytime soon. I'd love to raise my kids here and stuff. I would like to stay here long-term. I've got a great job lined up here. I really enjoy living here. It's very interesting to live here. And China is at a unique phase right now where they're facing a lot of challenges when it comes to environmental protection. But at the same time, the government is pretty supportive compared to other developing countries. So there are a lot of really great opportunities and I don't want to miss out on this time. And if I left for some reason or another, I'm not sure I would go back to the US, maybe go to another country like Malaysia or something. I don't know. But yeah, I'm not planning on leaving China anytime soon. Are you going to find another Chinese partner to start a family with? Slash, will you still accept cross-country relationships in the future? And if you're confused about this question, you can check out the second to most recent community post. So the issues that Wei and I had Personally, I would not attribute them to cultural differences. It was really more of an issue of personality clash than anything else. So I would absolutely date a Chinese guy again or a non-American guy. If you weren't aware, Wei and I were together for five years. And over those five years, I really learned to appreciate the idea of dating someone or being in a really serious relationship with someone who's from another country. Like my relationship with him hasn't made me not want to do international love again. It's made me want to do it more. And I can't really envision myself finding an American. Not that there's anything wrong with finding an American. I just really love the idea of being with someone from another country, another background. I think it's a very beautiful thing. So yeah, I feel like as long as I'm living in China, it's most likely that I would find a Chinese guy because there aren't that many foreigners in second tier cities. So I would rather find someone who's not in like the teeny little foreigner community. I'd rather cast the net far and wide. So I feel like it's most likely I would find a Chinese guy. Okay, time for another 180. Let's talk about birds. Do you like bird watching? 
it would be great if you could incorporate some bird related information when you visit rural areas. I do love the sound of birds or seeing birds that are in a relatively close distance to me, but I don't really go out specifically looking for birds with like binoculars or something. But I actually have a question I would like to pose to the asker of this question. Would you count chickens as bird watching? Because I love chickens. I love them so much. I'm sure you've figured that out already if you've watched a lot of these videos. There are always chickens showing up. Good afternoon, everyone from beautiful Shangri-La. Yeah, okay, there's a bunch of chickens in front of me. <laughs> Excuse me, this is a holy place. Okay, now it's time to feed those chickens. Oh, here's a bike. Better get out of the way. Oh, no, 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 not that way. Oh, this way. Oh, yes, yes, safe. <laughs> I love chickens. I am such an appreciator of chickens. I could watch them all day long. So if that counts, then yes, I am an avid bird watcher. Do you bike much when you're in the city or just in the countryside? Do you find it safe and comfortable to ride in big cities in China? I actually bike pretty much every day in the city. There are these public share bikes where you just open it with a QR code and you ride it to where you're going and you put it down. I really love the shared bikes because it doesn't tie you down to being right in the vicinity of your house. For example, you can take a metro to somewhere and then you bike and you put the bike down, then you take the metro somewhere else. So I bike all the time, but it just doesn't really show up in videos that often because I don't make very many of those like daily vlog type things. So you wouldn't see like, hey, I'm going to the grocery store today. I'm taking this bike. As for safety, Personally, I found that China is one of the safest countries for biking that I've been to. There's so many bike lanes and they're often more than just a simple lane. They actually put something in the way to separate you from the cars. There'll be like a grass median or a little fence or something. Bikes and motor scooters share the same lane. So even though you're split off from the cars and trucks and buses, you are sharing this lane with the motor scooter drivers, some of whom are kind of crazy. Of today's... Okay, there's more than enough space. You don't, you don't have to be like just zooming way too fast, especially the delivery drivers. I know they're in a rush to get you your noodles before it gets cold or whatever. And sometimes they ride on the wrong side too, which can be scary. But overall, in my opinion, China is a very bike friendly country, both in the cities and in the towns and rural areas. It is a bicycle paradise. And my red stallion and I will be back out on the road very soon making more bike vlogs. So stay tuned for that. For now though, the sun is setting. So I must say goodbye. That is all for today's Q&A vlog. Thank you all for your questions. And I'm sorry if I didn't get to yours. Really, I wanted to, but I can't make this video super long. So that's all for today. And I will see you guys next time.